There we go. Sorry guys for that technical difficulties. I messaged Jessica. So we're gonna start over. So for everyone joining, hi, my name is Mina Simone. I'm the outreach coordinator here at Immigrant Leaf Podcast. And today we're discussing astrology, religion, and identity in America with Jessica from Bahati Life. She's an astrologist, a tarot reader, the creator of Bahati Life, the apothecary, and so much more. So I'm going to have her join in since everyone's coming back. I'm excited. There we go. And if you didn't know from before, make sure you put your zodiac sign in the comments. I would love to know who's here. Yay! Yes, there we go. Hi, Jess. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing so well. I, before I was like trying to invite you, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't tell her to like log in. I know. Eric was like, girl, he's always on it for me. Eric's my one of oh my, my best God. friends and my assistant. He's like, you have to follow back. And I'm I've been running around all day today, so I wasn't able to, but we handled that. Yay, I'm so excited to have you today. It feels really good to be talking with you right now. I'm really excited too. Yes, I gave you an introduction, but I would love if you would properly introduce yourself. Um, so one of my ways that I introduce myself is by saying, you know, I'm an astrologer, I'm an intuitive. And the other way that I have learned to introduce myself is Virgo and now chicken and dog mama. So mm. <laughs> that's pretty much it. That's so exciting. You know, okay, so I told everyone to put their zodiac signs below. I know you're a Virgo. I'm a Pisces, so we're opposites. Okay, okay. So that's exciting. And I actually discovered Bahati like years ago, like maybe five years, four or five years ago, like in 2018, around that time. Yeah. And I was looking up like how to write a petition. Like someone told me like if you want something, how to manifest, you have to write a petition. So you were the first video that I saw. Yeah. And I was yeah. excited that you were a Virgo because I'm like, Yes, something that's going to be detailed, thorough, and efficient. And it, it actually worked really well. And from that point forward, my life has changed. So I wanted to Good. thank you so much. And I'm so, like, honored to, like, be talking with you now. Thank you. That makes me so happy to hear that. I typically get dragged for how much, not all the time, but I've <laughs> in the past, I've, get, I've gotten dragged for how much I talk. Um, but you know Virgos, man, like when we get to trying to prove our point and we're trying to help, I can't mm -hmm. give just a microwaved answer. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it big and we're going to take it all the way. Especially yes. if you say that this is something that you want to commit your life to, that this is that you're serious about, I will help you get there. And um, I, I want to make sure that I'm thorough and, you know, dotting the I's and crossing the T's so that whatever works for me can work for anybody else. Um, because mm -hmm. I, I want us all to win. And I feel like it's pretty, if you, I feel that if I can make a video that would inspire anybody to totally tap into their power, this world would be a tremendously awesome place. So, right. Yeah. No, I love it. Cause I'm sometimes a little all over the place in the cloud. So I needed that grounding. I love that. So I want to actually know, so your Virgo sun, what's your big three? So what's your moon and your rising? My moon is Cancer and my rising. Oh, wait, my moon is Virgo. I'm sorry. And my, my rising is Cancer. Oh, the double Virgo. That's interesting. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> yes. That's, um, so I'm a Pisces sun, a Scorpio moon, and a Sagittarius rising. So girl, it's really intense over here, but it's okay. We... We, we meditate through. We're going to work that's through it. That's good. That's good. I always wonder about my Pisces people. I'm like, yo, how <laughs> are you guys doing? Like, like every day, like, what do you guys, what's it, what's it feeling like for you? Like, it feels like a lot of things. That's mm -hmm. the whole point. It, yeah. it feels like a lot of things. So throughout the day, I've just learned to like, let it be and not get too drawn down into it, especially being a double water sign. I'll like. Yes, my love. Like, yeah. Makes so. Sense. Yes, we love to see. I like all the other water signs talking. Like, they yeah, I'm watching the comments about. right now too. We got um, Aaliyah's in here. It's so good. I I always see her all the time. Aries, yes. the first rising Pisces moon. So good to see you, babe. Oh wait, A four um, A Life Supreme says, "Yo, it's real. I can imagine. I can imagine." <laughs> yes, a roller coaster. Right. Yes. <laughs> And happy Leo season to all the Leos. I'm actually like Absolutely. wearing like a little line thing for the Leos okay, today. Okay. 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 Yes, for our Lionsgate, our new moon. Yeah. I'm so, 
to jump into the conversations and to give everyone who is just coming in now wondering what we're talking about. This season at Immigrantly, we're talking about religion and identity. And it was really important to me that we speak about astrology and how mm -hmm. we speak about um, spirituality in terms of like what religion is and identity because everyone's like, oh, what's your zodiac sign, your sun sign? Like what month were you born and what day it falls on? And in recent months, we've been, recent months, recent years, rather, it's been the whole birth chart, what's your moon sign, your rising, yep. your Venus, everyone. Right. Um, and a lot of people of color specifically yep. have been moving, um, stepping away from Christianity and moving more towards their selves with ancestors, spirit guides, their astrology, their, their charge and tarot. So I, when I thought about that, I was like, I need to talk to Jess. Yeah. Um, you run a tarot school, you do yeah. readings, you do um, astrological forecasts. So I wanted to talk to you about like, what is astrology and how does that play into identity? That's a really good question. So I'm going to say that astrology is the tool that the divine gave us in order to help us to understand the world that we were created in and to help us to maximize our fullest potential here. That's what astrology for me is. And to, and what I love about this topic um, and especially current events is that we are all in this space of like mass awakening where we don't have to box ourselves and even with the spirituality community i'm going to go off on this one but even with the spirituality community we're finding more people stepping outside of their comfort zones with the the belief systems that they were raised into and then drop jumping into the spirituality community astrology community and then they want to pen themselves and lock themselves into these boxes right and what is so important to that and what i love to teach my students and share on my instagram and all throughout the world is that you do not have to define yourself by any one thing. And astrology is so remarkable because it shows us all that we can be, all that we are, and how limitless that can like branch out into. And not only does that does that start and you know start with astrology or end at astrology, it, it branches out into like all the different things. Mm -hmm. I think one of the um, the beautiful things about astrology is that it's almost like. Uh, this is a bad choice of words, but it's the first thing that comes into my head. It's like the gateway drug. So mm -hmm. like once you yes, it really is. Right. <laughs> like it opens up a whole portal. And the first thing that that started that was, you know, to be curious and to ask questions and then, you know, researching and, you know, connecting with other people and you start seeing, okay, wow, like, you know, this when I understand my astrology chart, you know, whether you believe in astrology or not, because I always like to put that option out there, you don't have to believe it if you don't want to, but at least ask yourself those questions, you know, does this spark anything for you? And being, giving yourself the space to explore that means that, okay, who I am is going to be radically and rapidly changing because I no longer have to define myself or contain myself into this one thing. So that's what I love. And then the other aspect to that is that for those people who are not so sure of themselves. For example, maybe they're raised in home environments and we can see that within the astrology chart, you know, too. But let's say they're raised in home environments where someone is always telling them, you know, who they are, defining them or their culture or their society is telling them who they are. They get their hands on their astrological chart and they move from being in a space where they feel totally um, alien in the culture or the family that we're, they're raised in, the, the communities that they're raised in. But once they start looking at their astrology chart, they start having this sense of purpose and identity that the astrology chart reminds them of. So, mm. and that's what I love about astrology is that it's all, it's like the, the, the makeup of us. It's the energy of us. It's the element of what we are. So it's where we are familiar with, what we are uncomfortable with, what we will gravitate towards, what we reject and explains why. So having some education on that and some understanding of that, like I'm looking at these comments to you guys are so awesome. Like, so they're like, age of Aquarius, like, Woo! yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, having some understanding of that will help a person who has felt lost um, in maybe with their own identity or with their own relationships or with their career, help them to get a better understanding and grip of exactly what makes them and you know 
who they are. And then from then, from there, they can, you know, add on and, you know, this is like define themselves even more, which I think is amazing. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you, especially um, saying like it reminds you of something like sometimes yeah. we're in environments where our spirit is sometimes and our energy can be suppressed or misguided. It's true. And I know for me, um, my mom's a Virgo, my dad's a Capricorn, and I'm the only water sign in the house. Love so, that pairing. That's my favorite pairing. It, it was good, Virgo though. Pairing. I learned a lot. Yes, I learned a lot of good, hard, like, smart working traits from them. So I will give them that. And handling money seems to be a little bit better. Um, so, That's our hobby. but <laughs> growing up, I can, you know, I was a little more emotional. Definitely a lot more emotional. Girl. Then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, especially, like, I had air sign brothers who were Geminis and Libras. Yeah. So I was just in the mix. And yeah. so when I started to look more into astrology, um, and more so into my moon sign, that's when I was like, wow, that's how I feel. Like, yeah. that's really what that means for me. And yeah. it helped me not, like you said, not feel alienated or alone, but then it also helped me kind of venture off and try different things or look into different interests or, like, be more bold in who I am and not yeah. feel like, oh, it's weird. Like, no, like, I... I like things about death that resonated more with my scorpion than it did with my Pisces yeah. side sometimes. So it was like Pisces moon equals emotional turbulence. Yes. Like I can definitely. <laughs> yes. So when you, when speaking about identity, like, and now going more towards the birth chart, I kind of wanted to break that down with you because I'm still learning myself. Like we're always students of life and things like that. So from my understanding, like your sun is like who you're growing into, your moon sign is like past life, motherhood, and your rising is how people perceive you. Uh, for people who are newer to astrology, do you want to talk about the big three and how it can play into your life in many ways and how two Pisces and two Virgos might not be the same and why, how that can play into Yeah, so in a nutshell, and this is one of the reasons why I've really dragged my feet with teaching astrology or forming another aspect of the tarot school in the realms of astrology is because as simple as astrology wants to be it's very very complex mm -hmm. and the other thing is that astrology just like language and just like religion it's can be so differently translated depending on who's speaking the language and who's translating mm -hmm. it you know what i mean um, how I always looked at it and how I've always felt and the best way that I can describe my, the three bigs is, um, your sun, your moon, your rising sun is going to be your ego, what you understand about yourself and essentially like your identity, what gives you life, your moon. And of course the other aspects of what you said, of course, but those, that's someone else's translation of that and what mm -hmm. was a priority to them and what was important to them. Um, so the moon is our emotional needs, our emotional desires, and how we are emotionally fulfilled or emotionally can feel abandoned, right? And then your rising is your how the world sees you based upon your reaction to the world. So it's like this mirroring effect. Um, so what ends up happening though is that yeah, we have the 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 core of that, like the the overarching, you know, those are the themes of it, of what those uh, the sun, your moon, and your rising represent, but when they fall into different house um, or different signs, they will show up a certain way. That's their demeanor. That's how um, their vibe or their energy, so to speak. Then those planets, your sun, your moon, your, how your rising sign is situated, it will then be aspected by other planets that are also having their own, you know, um, temperaments their wants, their needs, their desires. And then they will come in and create these angles, say hi, blow a kiss, give the middle finger, you know, depending on their placement is the best way to describe how I'm going to describe it. So depending on their placements, it will show how they're going to um, react to each other and what they are creating, whether it be friction and feel good or be something, I'm sorry, friction that creates like a challenge or an effortless energy that has, you know, it feels really good and easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? So what ends up happening is that when you take a step back after looking really closely, and that for those of you guys who are on the Sacred Circle Tarot School, like you guys hear me say this all the time, time and time again, you look in, you look out, you look in, you look out. 
Virgo Pisces, where Virgo is looking at the bigger picture. I'm sorry, the smaller picture. Pisces is looking at the bigger picture, right? So the same thing is what happens when we understand these inner, you know, these tiny, tiny, you know, um, or more specific details, we take a step back and we say, okay, this is the larger, larger picture. So even though you may have someone who has their sun, their moon, and their rising very similar to you, um, or in the same signs, um, and even the same houses, they may not be aspected. Um, Shibogi says, sacred circle students, yay! Um, <laughs> oh, and Tasha's here too. But so um, even though they may have the same placements, for the most part, the way, or they might be falling in the same signs or same houses, the way that each person's astrology chart is mapped out will create a different energy because they might have a different friction in a different area. So that's why you won't see similarities between all the sun signs. If you think about it, it doesn't logically make sense in us, you know, like for us to just scoop all of the planet together take a pizza pie cutter, knock it into 12 different pizza slices, and then divvy it up and say, all Pisces, you're the same. All Aquarius, you're the same. All Geminis, you're the same. There's going to be some, just by having a conversation, um, just by having a conversation with, you know, a person on the street, you're going to, you know, know that there's a difference between them and another person, even if they have the same sun sign. And it's always about the energy that their chart is making based upon the, the relationship that the planets are having and the way that they're reacting to each other within the chart. Hmm. That, that makes a lot of sense. And I'm seeing how people are saying like this squared that, and I have looked into my aspects and I'm like, every time I see a square, I'm like, that makes so much sense. Or like why there's more difficulty there versus like, I know my moon and my um, Venus are trining, tr trining. And I'm like, I can see how that's yeah. helping ease my, but it's, it's hard to so, learn all these things. It <laughs> is. And what's so important though, because you know, to, when you're working with astrology, when you're working with esoteric symbolism, tarot, anything like that, right? You're a human being trying to logically understand and study a spiritual a spiritual topic, a spiritual mm -hmm. science, right? And it's so important, and I say this again, not to talk about the Sacred Circle Tarot School again, but within, I tell the students all the time, listen, like, you, you want to look in, but you want to take a step back because you don't want to get so locked and loaded into look, approaching this from such a logical perspective because you're going to mess yourself up. Right. And one thing that is so simple, but it makes a big difference is our perspective on it. So let's say we think, oh, a trine. So easy and effortless means that this is something that's good. And I'm proud of all the trines that is I have in my chart because this means that this flows here and, you know, I don't have any conflict or tension versus, oh my God, logically speaking, my brain and society or the way that we use language says that a square is difficulty and challenges are bad and I don't want to be uncomfortable. So seeing these squares within my chart, they're going to rub me the wrong way. I'm going to have dif difficulties here. And the thing is, is that, in the spiritual, you know, if you study and work with spirit and work with spiritual studies in general, you're going to understand really quickly, or you should at least understand that there's no such thing as a good or bad thing. Mm -hmm. And having trines in your chart or having squares in your chart is not necessarily good, bad or evil or whatever. It just is what it is. It's what the energy is being created there. And to bring it back full circle is that the more that you understand without you know, choking on it because you're trying so hard to like get it all down, meaning like, you know, all that you're learning, all that you're hearing, the more that you understand and approach astrology with an open mind and a curious mind, you're going to start to not only look at yourself different and look at astrology different, but you're going to look at the world differently because you're going to start, it's going to guide you into being in a space of being impartial. It's going to guide you into a space of being more compassionate and kind and patient, which is huge. And, you know, and loving because you're going to understand like, okay, you know, knowing this and you, you see it all the time in the astrology chart, you know, I don't need to approach this with judgment or harshness. It's just a different, a different touch. It requires a different love language, you know, and everything that we touch every day, everything that we're working with is a relationship. So if you understand the energy of this, you can have a better outcome that matches your intention. So mm -hmm. that's something too, that I find is so special and unique.
you know yeah coming back into yourself um and being the only way you can be more compassionate with others is having compassion for yourself totally. and your own nuances like you said like it's, it's more than just one thing to this thing and it's based on your perspective how you look at your chart at one age versus how you look at your chart maybe at a different age and how like you said challenges aren't necessarily bad they help us grow they help us discover ourselves they help right. us find solutions to problems that we didn't think about and choose yeah. new paths that we're not used to and make so those massive are all changes in this world exactly and being uncomfortable isn't a bad thing it's a very human thing and it's something that if we could find like comfort or stillness in uncomfortability i feel like right. it, it, it creates a beauty in who we are right. and like you said you go into astrology it's the gateway drug and now you're looking at your houses and your aspects yeah. and a lot of people and i might be saying this wrong are they looking at their vedic chart vedic everyone's right. in a weird vedic everyone's in a weird well i don't want to say everyone but it's different per person it's what mm -hmm. you gravitate towards because i there's so many different um approaches to astrology mm. and one of my favorite resources that i use is astro.com and the reason why i love that one is because it's so precise and there's so many different things that you can um you know uh adjustments that you can make in order to reflect where your your focus is mm -hmm. um you know on your chart whatever chart you're pulling and whatever method that it is that you're using and then on top of that you can go into solar returns lunar returns progressions all of that so everyone like write that down i don't know if you heard her she said astro.com so everyone yeah, go look at their yeah. charts um and speaking of the sacred tarot school and i do want to get into that because there are astrological um correspondences to tarot and yeah. using tarot as a tool as um to help with divination and things like that and i i want to speak about the stigma of tarot especially in the black and caribbean communities because um i know that my dad was a christian a minister and at first when i came into tarot I was like that's the devil's work or whatever that means yeah um and it's evil don't play with that you'll get hurt and mm -hmm. what yeah. i found with my relationship with tarot and letterman cards and just different forms of divination because every there's so many there are so many out there yeah. that it was another part of working with myself it was just mm -hmm. like in how perspective how your mental state how your emotional state your spiritual state all affects that so if you could tell me more about the school everyone says the school is amazing and um khadijah Yo yes yogini hello um i'm happy to know that and like what like the stigma against tarot what it is and more about your school and how you perceive that so I was raised in a very, my mom's an Aquarius and my father is a Virgo. By the grace of God, they didn't make it through <laughs> like that marriage. They separated. Um, they're very different people. My father is mm. very Christian. He's also British. Um, so he had his own, um, you know, belief systems and <clears throat> his own culture. My mother is Jamaican and has um her 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 father biological father is chinese immigrant moved to jamaica and my grandmother is irish jamaican Immi mm -hmm. her mother is irish immigrant and jamaican um her father jamaican so to, i'm saying all of that because there is this really tremendous push pull in my upbringing when it came to religion and where where this was gonna go like where the beliefs were gonna go and it would have been easier for me to choose the christian path and i tried um but it didn't resonate all the time and over time i was lucky enough that my aquarius mother who then broke away from the christian church she explored many different belief systems um, we simultaneously were exploring it together. My mom and I have always said that like we were reincarnated into this life as like sisters, you know, or friends mm -hmm. because we did so many things side by side. So mm -hmm. when we, um, I was lucky enough to be supported by her. So then when I came to her and I said, mom, I want to explore Wicca, um, and different other belief systems, she would be the first one to apply, you know, give me resources and whatnot. 
So I understand. And meanwhile, on the flip side, my father was saying, what you're doing, I do, like, make sure that you're praying to the right God. Um, and then his wife would give me journals, tell me to write in my journals, and then read that I was exploring the spirit world. And I was having experiences with my intuition and then continue to like, like demonize it and make me feel guilty and bad and try to have these conversations, which I was open to it, but I was also open to all these other things mm -hmm. and all these other gifts that I had. And my family on my mother's side is very, very gifted. They always have been very gifted. So I totally understand, especially in the African American community, community, the stigma because they over time religion if throughout history our religion our belief system was something and a lot of other things are some things that do we lose okay okay our religion and belief systems were things and other things were things that were forced down our throats and were not things that we were actively choosing or our identities were trying they were are the way the world that we were in was trying so hard to strip us of our gifts are the things that actually make us strong and then teach us that what was making us weaker what was making what they were profiting off of what they were benefiting off of was actually making us strong and using the same word um oh ashley's saying colonize coloniz colonization noble is love is saying colonization exactly that's exactly what i'm talking about so you know throughout history our the african-american communities and families have really struggled with I feel um, feeling more comfortable and free to explore different avenues of reaching connecting and having a more intimate relationship with God and I believe it's the Bible that says it don't hold me to it but there are many things that say you know, there are many paths to God or there's many paths to the divine. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. And it's true. And I think that throughout my lifetime and what I've witnessed from other people, the more that a population, especially women, especially rooted women, the more that they are strong in their intuition and developing their skills and their resources and their medicine and you know, following and developing a relationship with God, the more empowered they are. So it would make sense for a society that wants them to be in a role of being subservient and a service, you know, to other cultures and other people, it would make sense for us to be diminished within that. And I think that that's something that we're still moving through to this day, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, so what I loved is that for me, it was walking away from all religion and rejecting the idea of God and rejecting my own intuitive gifts, but also being really curious to explore them was what ultimately had me plummet into it, head over heels in the best way possible. And that's why I love hearing an, an agnostic or um, what's the other one? I was just talking about my friend to my friend about this agnostic and um, friggin' I totally forgot. But it's so good for me to hear um, people totally reject the idea of God and even reject initially reject Christianity or reject any religion because when you start pushing into one opposite, you will be you will be have it proven to you exactly the right path simply because mm -hmm. you're you're reeling off of it. So if there are parents or families that are concerned about someone finding their spiritual path, they will, there you go. Noble's love says it, atheist, right? Um, but so regardless, the divine, if you're meant to find God, if you're meant to have a higher experience, it will find you, you will find it. It's like a relationship. It's unavoidable. Mm -hmm. It will come together, but you want to be open to where that's going to take you. And the other thing too, is that right now and i'm so excited to see the witchcraft and you know those who are studying astrology tarot anything like that um i'm so excited to see them because you know show up in this forum because it wasn't that long ago that 
you know, tarot and astrology was still demon, well, it was really demonized. There was no way that we could be, I mean, the death threats that I got when t Instagram wasn't even a thing, but Twitter was, I oh, got no. death threats all the time. And for tarot, um, for like practicing tarot. Oh yeah. Big time, big time. And a lot of the hate that I was getting was, um, random people, big time Christians, big time Christians. And some of the more personal things that hurt me were the comments that I was getting from my own African American community on what it was that I was doing, because I'm like, damn, like I'm a gifted person. I didn't, I didn't wake, I didn't walk into this life. Like, Hey y'all, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, back in the day, I mean, it's different now is what I'm saying, but back in yeah. the day, this was years ago, there was the reason why Bahati life is even a name. Um, is because I could not safely publicly put my name out there. Um, I, and also my, my family would have on my dad's side would have been really upset. So that's how I protected myself, not realizing that again, me doing these things was only leading me to my path ultimately. So with the sacred circle tarot school, it's a, a very sacred space. And I call it sacred for a reason, because these are things, which is people who are doing tarot or studying tarot, practicing tarot from all walks of life, from all different religions and belief systems. Um, so a lot of people are doing it quietly in the closet. I mean, women too, like we hide our magic all the time. We hide our gifts all the time because we don't want to be deemed crazy and we're not supported and we'll get our eyes rolled at us or whatever. I mean, it's getting better, but um, yeah, there's, it's a space where everyone can come together um, and not only study the tarot, the esoteric symbolism of the tarot, the history of the tarot, but take it further than, you know, meanings and symbolism and mm -hmm. learn how to develop and strength and strengthen your intuitive gifts, tie that into numerology, all the different things. And more than that, it's about lifestyle. It's about, in, you know, intuitive message shares. It's about prophecies, about vision. It's about lifestyle changes. And from what I've been continuing to hear is that it's more than just a school. It's more than just studying the tarot and astrology. It's been life changing. So, um, you know, I want to create that space. I set really strong intention that who's in there is meant to be in there because we do talk a lot about a lot of really controversial and difficult topics. And I don't want that to be, you know, out, you know, in the, in the world, but yeah, you know, it's tough, it's tough, but it's good to do this, you know, in a group, a supported tribe. Yeah. I, I always say like, people think they have to like, in some, in many ways we have to go in word and heal alone, but a lot of healing is done in community. Big like time. sometimes we, we can't, hold our own sorrows we can't hold our own pains and our regrets and our anguish so we come together in community to to right. uphold each other and to hold that together so i'm happy there's a space that people especially like women of color i'm sure are in your yeah. school who are taking the chances to get to know themselves and to get to know god which is getting to know yourself and that like becomes yeah. a whole dynamic within itself and i'm happy that you said um that even in the bible um god says like there are many paths to me and I will come to you in many ways. Yeah. And um, having studied the Bible because of my dad being a minister, um, yeah. that was one of my main things. Like I was always like, it says to be curious. It says yeah. to come find me and to like find yeah. yourself and to find your people. And I remember before astrology, I was into Buddhism for whatever reason, it just made sense to me to chant uh, Nietzsche Buddhism to be specific. Yeah. Um, to chant and to honor ancestors. So that's how I was being guided. I was always like, I want to honor the people who like, I love my grandparents. And when they pass on, I'm like, I don't know. I still kind of feel them. Yeah. I'm like, I still like, They're here. there were so many times when I'm like, I, there's like a knowing, like you said, it's not logical. It's like a knowing yeah. there's no reason behind it. There's no pattern behind it. It, it just is. Yeah. And with coming into like identity and religion and how astrology moves into that with tarot, like you said, it changes your outlook on the world and how you look at yourself but that brings you to a better community like i haven't heard anyone be like yeah i went into astrology and i needed rehab like i never like like it wasn't that type of gateway drug like yeah. where they regret it and maybe whatever there's, the case may be there's some people who do dapple in tarot or astrology mm -hmm. and you know over time they decide you know what this is not for me and that's a blessing. Like that's a gift. It's the fact that you tried it. You were curious. You have an answer to that question that, that 
area of your, your spirit is quenched and then it's time for you to move on. Right. And no one, I, I believe that like God, the divine, I say the divine because I believe that there's, you can't, it, the, the God, him or her, so whenever I was approached by God or archangels, um, when I see them, they're not, they don't have a sex or a gender, they're genderless, you know? So I say divine because it match, it uh, forces both of those aspects, you know, together. But, you know, the divine shows up in all of these different cultures and all these different places and all these different people in different ways. And it's what is going to feel like home for you. And that's mm -hmm. something that when you feel it, you will know it. It's un like, it's a feeling of literally I'm coming home and I'm curious and I feel like I belong here. And regardless of how crazy it is, you know, I, this is where I'm at. And the thing is, is that it doesn't need to bring it back full circle again. You know, astrology will show you, you know, it doesn't have to have this one label. It could be a multitude of different belief systems. And if you take a step back and look at them, they're all very similar. They just have a different way of translating from, you know, how the art, how um, the the angels show up or archangels shows up, show up to their Orishas, to the Greek gods and goddesses. They all go hand in hand. They're just different cultures. And mm -hmm. the thing is, is that I have known and I've experienced that the divine energy is limitless and so powerful and so compassionate, so understanding and so forgiving. So whatever way that you will be most open to that, absorbing that is how it will show up. And it doesn't punish you for finding it. It rewards you with comfort and embraces you. So, and I truly, to take this to another level, I truly believe that the divine wants each and every single one of us to be happy, fulfilled, and fully like, you know, living our best lives, whatever that looks like. But for a lot of us, it's not these superficial things. And that path into the world of astrology or into the world of tarot will teach you really clearly, you know, this is what I actually am prioritizing, or this is a lesson that I need to learn so that I can stop repeating these patterns and better understand myself so that I'm not, I don't find myself stumbling into my own personal hell again and again and again. Mm. So, and through, through that, you will actually fall into the divine, fall into peace, fall into unconditional love and have a totally different experience and outcome. Step into your power. Even in the Bible, it says, yo, speak my will, like use the power that I gave you by, you know, you know, speaking my word, the word was given to you through your heart or given to your spoken into your soul. I put that there for a reason. When you explore yourself, you will explore me. There is a connection that we have here. God is within you. You know, you're seeking God. God is within you. Like all these things are connected. And ultimately this higher power wants you to be happy and fulfilled. So the more that you are exploring yourself, the more that you're exploring God and this relationship gets tighter and tighter. But when our society starts to restrict us, Christians or whatever, however the belief system is, when our society starts to restrict us or punish us for being curious or loving or open or, mm -hmm. you know, anything like that, that's when we really start seeing a breakdown, if you ask me. Now, there are people who need a little bit more rules right. and structure, which is fine because it's like dealing with, um, I, you know, I hate to, but addiction, like, you know, some people need to be continually rerouted um, or guided to, you know, through lights. Okay, this is how you find God, and they need that. And other people need more freedom. Again, you could see that within the astrology chart, but to each their own, no judgment. Yeah, I'm looking at all the comments as you were talking, and I'm like, wow. Like, yes, I'm obviously saving this life for everyone who's, like, trying to, like, get it all together. And, and, that's, and that's beautifully said. Um, like you said, like, the restriction of our society and our culture, and, and like you said, punishing us for being curious, and uh, that's exactly what I wanted to, like, have you here for, for the people who were curious but then didn't have a way, especially on the immigrantly side, to have these conversations yes. about that. Yes. Um, There's this happy... thing. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, I'm happy some people were speaking about um, hoodoo because that's where I, like, found my home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy. No. There's this tarot card that I was talking about not too recently ago, the Hierophant, right? So when mm -hmm. you break it down into numerology, the Hierophant is five. It's halfway point between <clears throat> one and ten, right? And the Hierophant shows up and says, listen, 
you know, I am the Pope, the priest, right? But the thing is, is that it was number five in the, the procession of the fool's journey. That's why mm. I love tarot. So before we met the priest, we met the high priestess at number two. And it shows if you study numerology, if you study, you know, how things kind of played out within the fool's journey, you understand that spirit, God, the divine wanted us to tap into our intuition, our higher self first, before we consulted the priest at five. And mm -hmm. the reason why five, the number of change and radical, you know, disruption within our lives is ruled by the priest, the priest who uphold these rules and regulations and restrictions. Um, the reason why it's there at number five is because when there is radical change, it's not the priest that is speaking um, our, our intuition. It's not the priest who is spe speaking to us, you know, these prophetic words. It was always the, the visioner. It was always the, the gifted, right? Sometimes they come together. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes they do come together, but the priest was there to, to say what was translated by those who were intuitive the, the priest is there to share what was recorded by those who heard from God, spoke, be, were spoken from, spoken mm. to God. So when there is this crazy change that's going on and you're at that halfway point within your life and you don't know where to go, you didn't run to the, I mean, you run to the church for a safe space, absolutely. But it was always the intuitive message before that the heart space, when you go in and you ask God, I need to come to you first. And that's why I love, you know, um, tarot and again astrology and numerology because all of these things that God gave us or the divine wrote for us especially if you want to look at it from a Christian perspective it's written all throughout the Bible we have so much symbolism uh, symbolism in the Bible so much numerology in the Bible and so much of you know astrology in the Bible so the four the four evangelists Matthew, Matthew Mark um, Jude, John and Luke they are broken down into um, the four fixed signs mm. so aquarius the man um scorpio the bird so um i'm sorry the eagle um leo the lion and taurus the ox and those are the same animals that showed up even in the book of revelation when mm. this beast came down it's if you look it up it's the four those four things and the symbolism of them constantly breaks down and then also ties into astrology so you can't tell me as someone who took on all of these different belief systems and different religions and saw God or saw the divine in every single one of them and said, you know what? I see God. I see the presence of the energy here. I see the presence of the divine here. But again, it just doesn't feel like it's my home. And mm -hmm. I just kept going along my path. Right. And, um, until I found, found my home until I found my place. But through that, I would be like, okay, we if you dive into it, you'll, you'll start to connect the dots, not from the, like a space of conspiracy, but just more like, this is God's word. This is the divine's word. This is the word of, you know, what has always been spoken. And we see these um, traits all throughout. So it's really amazing. And that's another thing too, that we talk about in the sacred circle tarot school. And we're talking about here now. Yes. Well, whenever it opens, I'm like coming. Cause it's like, it's profound that we find all these stories in different religions, whether it's like, Egyptian mythology and the story of Horus and Osiris and Isis and like all these things that you're speaking of yeah. and like you said Luke John like how it plays itself over and over and over again um yeah. and there's um the 12 worlds in Buddhism like the 12 upper and lower realms of spirit and humanity and how the 12 zodiac signs and right all these different things the four elements the four brothers like exactly. and how these things play into each other that God is in everything, even if it looks different and one maybe looks logical and one is intangible. And just hearing you speak on that is just like really inspirational. I'm like blown away. I don't know if anyone else is blown away, but um, I love that. how I love can that. I, I'm like trying to figure out where to pivot because I want to talk about this new moon that phase that we're in right now and the Lionsgate that just happened because I'm pretty sure everyone wants to talk about that. But everyone wants to know and I want to know how can where would you say to start from astro.com and learning your chart? And then, like you said, like delving into like the histories of things, where would you say it's like, here's my beginning. Um, um so, um, the lion, well, you're, you mentioned the Lionsgate portal. Um, but 
what that's something different than mm -hmm. this where do i say that you begin and it's the same thing i tell my students um you always are going to begin within hands down i mean whether you're listening to me whether you're listening to someone who is a respected whoever you are going to or whatever the whatever the resource is you are always going to want to start within yourself and why that is, is because at the beginning and at the end and then on and beyond, you are going to want to have a relationship with the divine and with the relationship within your higher self. Mm -hmm. If you start within yourself, you are going to absolutely 6,000% feel yourself being called to different things that your path is going to take you. Just like your astrology chart is so unique your natal chart is so unique your path into developing your psychic your intuitive gifts finding your um your soul tribe finding you know your study of astrology or tarot or whatever the case is is going to be uniquely your own there you're going to come across especially when you commit to um, your to growing your intuitive gifts and, and, and growing your talents and exploring your talents, you will find like minded souls and spirits. Um, you will, without a doubt, find these amazing people who you're going to cross paths with. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you don't want to get lost in the sauce of that. At the end of the day, right. like, you, <laughs> have to, you, you really have to ground yourself because you're, and the other thing is that not only you have to understand, and this is what they're not saying, like you have to understand that these enlightened prophets, these enlightened individuals, or these people who are exploring, yeah, you need them. But the crazy thing is, is that the rest of the world needs you and your enlightened thoughts and your enlightened perspectives. And if you start to go and fall back in, which our society and people have a really a really bad habit of doing this we we fall into sheep mentality where we're like oh what they have and what they know is more than what i know and what i have to offer that is a that is such a lie so to start you want to you want to go within i always say to my sacred circle tarot school the only thing that is going to be the biggest resource is not so much you know the the information and the you know the meanings of these tarot cards or the meaning of what this planet means when it's this, you know, what happens there, it's going to be your journal. Mm -hmm. It's going to be what you write down and what you record because that itself is a sacred text. It's all of your experiences. It's all of your intuitive um, thoughts that are coming to you. The only difference is, is that you're approaching it from a different perspective that allows you to understand it on a different level. And you are being given the tools and the resources in order to prioritize it and to do something with it. So it now becomes a tool. Right. So having said all that, you know, what, what is the best resource, of, you know, after that? Yeah, people are asking, like, how to start within, like, and I feel like everyone can be different. I know, like, for me, I like, I don't know, like, spirit will bring you to, like, whatever you need. If you ask, I always say, like, if you're like, I want to strengthen my intuition, I want to start within, can you show me how? Things will come up, like, if, if, like, if your intentions are pure and if you're really focused on that and that's what you want to bring into you. And I actually learned that from your um, petition um, video all those years yeah. ago. It's just like really being specific about what you want and say and being like really strong in that. So like whether it's meditation, I know can start within with a lot of things or journaling. Yeah. Um, but whatever tools you want to talk about too, I'm sure everyone is like. So how one of my one tool is other people's experiences and a great way to do that is number one using astro.com if you want to dive into astrology um and use those charts <clears throat> document them through your journal and then go into astrology forums right so there's this one um astrology for well there's a bunch of them um i think one's linda Goodman, I think. Don't quote me on it. There's just put in a Google search and you'll see a bunch of forums, right? And look through each one of those transits that are you're, you've lived through yourself or you intimately know someone who's not going to, you know, lie to you or feel comfortable talking to you about some really intimate moments and experiences because that's going to really just knock it out of the ballpark when it comes to, okay, this is undeniable. Um, so 
yeah, so you, you look at these transits and you start to do research on them. You don't want to do it from a blog perspective, a blog opinion, because a lot of those blogs that are at the very top are things that are recycled, like verbatim, they're recycled. And they're up there for a reason. Ooh, they're up there for a reason. And the, the reason is usually because it, it's good quality information. Like, no shade, no shade, don't come for me. But mm. to be honest, so, but when you, when you dive into these forum groups and I'll find a way to, I, I think if we're, we're going to record this podcast, I'm going to put it on my podcast. You can put it on your podcast. Okay. Um, and I can put the, I'll send you the link. So then when we upload the podcast, we can share the link with everybody. Mm. But you, yeah, someone said, save this live, please. Yes. No, we're going to save you. this live. You. And me and Jess are going to talk more about it. this on her podcast. So that's exciting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what you do is you look at other people's experiences because they'll, you'd be surprised how quick, you know, people are about, um, sharing their own experiences, um, and getting it off their chest. You're going to learn so much more through that than, you know, books or other resources. The other thing that you can do if you're interested in like tarot is doing every day. And I know this is not the answer that everyone wants to hear. And I've gotten to the point in my life where I'm like, you know what? I don't care. It's the, <laughs> best, it's the best way. Right. So you want to do these daily uh, tarot pools or shuffle for other people. You will then start to make connections between what a tarot card, you know, the energy of what a tarot card brings into how that mirrors into your everyday life that just expands way beyond the beginner intermediate level, to be honest with you, level of study when you are just sticking with the meanings of the tarot card. And that's another thing that we talk about in the Sacred Circle Tarot School is that tarot goes far beyond the meanings of the cards. And what I hate to see is tarot readers and intuitives getting so caught in the book knowledge of it that they just stop right there. And that's as far as it goes. Um, and then they start, it just opens up a whole thing there. So yeah. Just like Akashic um, Visionary says, yes, the daily pulls and tarot readings, it helped me so much. And it does. And yeah. I understand um, people are like, okay, Jess, yeah, but we want like get quick. And that's the thing, like you're never going to, if you want to get the results, you have to put in, you have to put in the work. And it's the like a true Virgo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> but yes. um, if you, it's the same thing when, you know, if you're trying to make a, positive change in your diet, your lifestyle, your mental health, whatever it is, your relationship, you can't just say, all right, well, one and done, you know, it's like, no, you, you really, if you gotta commit, you got to commit to, it. it's got to be something that you want to do. And if not, there's other things that you can explore and, and dive into, but you, you developing your intuitive gifts clearly is not something that is a value to you. And that's okay to each their own. Maybe your intuitive gifts will only get you this far when someone else says, listen, I really want to master this or I really want to take this to the next level. And that's what, that's the way to go. And there's so many different ways to do that. I know like I wasn't personally pulled towards tarot, but I was pulled towards dreams. Like obviously, right? My Venus is also in Pisces. That's a whole nother thing with all this water in my chart. Venus yeah. in Pisces. But my dreams are very vivid. Really so I've been right. recording my dreams for years every day. So yeah. that's been something I could commit to. So if, like, if everyone's like, oh, I see some people like, oh, I hate it. If, t if you can't commit to, like, doing tarot pulls every day, there's other intuitive tools and divination and things you can do right. for yourself that's for your calling and your purpose. Like, not everyone mm -hmm. is a dream magic or dream interpreter. Not everyone's a tarot reader, you know? And so not to um, discourage anyone so but commitment yeah. is the most important thing even like as a yoga teacher like doing yeah. something every day is what you're going to need to like to honestly discover yourself you learn a lot through commitment yeah you learn you probably learn more about yourself through committing to the daily pulls and you learn about the cards exactly so. it's whatever you feel curious and you're pulled to and you know there's nothing but support and love there yeah so I'm going to, um, and for everyone who's wondering, yes, Jess has a podcast. It's called Bahati Life. Someone said they didn't know, so I wanted to make sure oh. they check that out. Yeah. And um, I'm going to be talking with Jess more about moving away from Christianity and things like this on her podcast so we can, like, delve deeper into it yeah. um, from a more astrological and um, spiritual perspective. So I'm really excited for that. 
And um, I'm, so I'm looking at the comments to make sure I missed anything. Yeah, let's see what we got here. Um, Chanel said, there's nothing wrong with reading books to learn. Also be willing to look past the books as well, though. Totally. Whatever you cross paths with, to each their own, li li literally, like I said. Yeah, journaling's a great thing. Like, journaling, you find out a lot about yourself. I've had a journal since, like, 2017, and I look back at it, I'm like, wow, you'd be surprised how much subconscious stuff comes out in your writing yeah. if you do it every day. Totes. Um, or consistently enough. Beverly yes. Love said, these topics are so important to discuss. Girl, you ain't know that. Yes. Um, huh. And so the last thing I want to ask you, where can people find you? Where... um. Do you do tarot readings for people? Do you do birth chart readings? How can people get more in tune with Jess and Bahati Life? Yeah, um, the Akashic Visionary said it perfectly right there, BahatiLife.com. She spelled it wonderful, too. Um, so that's my hive. You know, that's the portal, the, hunt, the home base. And from that, you can check out the apothecary, get candles, fix candles. Um, oh, here's one right now. Whoa, there's a goddess bottle that just jumped off the table. I was going to grab that for you as well. And um, the, there's links to the school, the Sacred Circle Tarot School. That's open year round. We go, it's crazy how I show up. Speaking of consistency and commitment, um, unless there's something going on, every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you're going to see us gathering. Um, I was thinking about closing the school down, but there's just so much that we get from it. There's so much that I get from it. I love mm -hmm. everybody in there. And we just keep uncovering more and more and more. And it's just awesome. Um, also on social media, you can check me literally just Bahati Life. So B as in boy, each E H A T as in tiger, I L I F as in focaccia bread. <laughs> <laughs> e.com um bahati life and or just bahati life and twitter instagram youtube tiktok um all of them i'm not doing readings right now um number one they book out way too far that's not me, me flexing it's just they book out way too far in advance to the point where if i feel you know, that day of that, like, I just don't have the energy to do it. It was just creating way too much chaos and disappointment for people who have been waiting too long. And then I would also, let's say I would do like small chunks. If I, they would be like, well, you sell out, you know, you book up so fast. So either way it was disappointing people. Mm -hmm. So the more that I was able to just kind of channel my energy into doing readings for those who were in my personal environment, the better I was feeling about it. So I just give that energy to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm not open for readings. I know that there are some people in my comments and on the YouTube channel, this is like all throughout the spirituality community. That's something else I predicted like two years ago. Um, the spirituality community is being attacked right now. Um, they're just, you know, spammers and scammers who are coming through saying, you know, reach out to them. So <clears throat> I'm not doing readings at this moment in time outside of some of my clientele that, um, you know, got it. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much. This was an amazing conversation. No, like really. And I'm excited to speak with you more and to delve yeah. deeper into this soon. Thanks. So, yes, I was gonna say so. Thank you so much, and thank you to Eric um, for choreographing all of this. Oh yes. Us. Oh my God. He is my Gemini right hand man. I don't know what I would do without him. Yes. Is... Yes. Look at that. And um, for everyone who's here from Bahati Life, um, please check out the Immigrantly podcast. We have a great wide of like range of conversations, including these type of conversations. So we hope that you listen to both of us and we'll speak to you soon. Absolutely. <laughs> Bye, Jess. Enjoy your night Bye. and happy new moon. Yes. Thank all of you guys. Make sure you set intentions because this is a good one. Well, yes, and I'll be still editing. Yeah more to it and i'll be saving this for everyone who missed it or want to backtrack so yeah <laughs> bye guys bye